And my name is Jeff Levin. I'm policy director at East Bay Housing Organizations. And we will be walking through a presentation on how to use the California State Legislature's website to look up and track bills um, that are moving through the California State Assembly and State Senate. Let me put something up on screen that um, can walk you through this. Give me just a moment to bring this up. I hope everybody can see this. This is the state legislature's uh, website. Um, I'll just note the website is legginfo.legislature.ca.gov. And Alex, perhaps you can put that in the chat for people as well. Um, this is the main California legislative information site. So if you look across the top, you will see there are links not only to bill information, but to uh, California law where you can look up uh, uh, existing law in all the various state codes and, and a bunch of other resources, some of which we will come back to and, and talk about in this presentation, some of which we won't because they go beyond uh, the issue of legislation. But this is the main site and it does have on it some quick search links for both bills uh, over on the left side here and for uh, looking up uh, specific legislative codes, government code, health and safety code. Um, so if you know very specifically what you're looking for, you can just go to this homepage and look for it there. But otherwise, the best way to do this is to go to the bill information tab up here at the top left of the screen. Click on that. Oh, and my session has expired. Lovely. Um, there we go. So this is what the bill search screen looks like. And you'll see it gives you a number of options. So the easiest is if you already know uh, the bill number that you are looking for, uh, it's quite easy um, to go in. So for example, we spent a bunch of time talking about AB 15 earlier in the meeting. So you can simply insert the bill number um, and my experience has been, it doesn't matter if you leave a space between uh, the prefix or not. If you look for it by bill number, you will land on the page for that bill. Um, I'm going to back up for a second and just note that maybe you sort of know the bill number, but you can't remember if the bill is in the Senate or the Assembly, and so you don't know if it's AB 15 or SB 15. You can simply put 15 in and search for that. And it will show you that there is both an AB 15 and an SB 15. The AB 15 is the one that deals with uh, rent relief and um, uh, uh, the eviction moratorium. And so from there, you can click on that and get right back into uh, the bill information. Um, we'll go through the details of this in a minute, but I want to talk about some other ways to search first. So again, from the search screen, you can search by bill number. You can search by author. If you click here, there's a list of all the people in both the Assembly and the Senate. So if you want to see um, what are the bills that have been authored by a particular legislator, you can do so. So for example, let's see if we have anything for Nancy Skinner. And there are a whole bunch of bills that Skinner is already um, signed on to. Um, the Budget Act's already there, it looks passed by the Senate, but you can see at the top here on the right, um, uh, the current status of those bills. And uh, you can click on the links on the left side with the bill number in order to see the details on that. Um, another way in which you can search, a uh, little more difficult, but if you are looking to see if there's any legislation that is changing particular sections of the law, you can identify which part of state code. These are abbreviations for um, different state codes, uh, the business and professions code, uh, civil code, um, code of civil procedure, uh, government code. So uh, once you know what, what section of the law, you can choose the code section and then you can all the code type and then the code section. This one is actually where the Surplus Land Act is. And at the moment, there is no legislation pending that would amend that section of the code. Um, but that's one way to see if there's anything sitting out there. 
You can also use this to look at bills that were passed in previous sessions. To do that, you first have to click over here in session year and choose the session. Um, and we're actually gonna be looking at um, a previous one because there's more detail, but you would need to identify which session uh, it is in uh, and then the bill number. So because the bill numbering system starts over every year. And so you have to specify which two year session you are talking about. So I'm gonna jump into a bill from a couple years ago because a lot of right now, the bills that have been introduced really haven't gone anywhere yet. And a lot of what you can do with this site isn't going to be visible as yet. So I'm actually going to look at AB 1486 from uh, 2019, 20. Um, we search on 1486, there was only an assembly bill. So this takes us directly into AB 1486, which was the amendments to the Surplus Land Act. When you land on this page, what you will see uh, is the current most recent version of the bill. Um, and as the bill moves through the legislature uh, and gets amended, each one is posted separately as a separate version. Up here in the top right, uh, under version, there is a drop down box where you can look at all the versions in reverse order. So starting from the bottom, you can see the bill as it was introduced. It was amended three times in the assembly, amended another three times in the Senate before being passed and then signed by the governor and put into law. So if you're interested in what was in a particular version of the bill as it was moving along, there is a way to jump uh, to that and see that right away. Uh, where you land will be the bill text. Uh, and as you scroll down, um, there's two parts here. There is a legislative council's digest. This is a summary from the state legislative council that generally includes both what is in existing law and then how this bill would expand it. And it goes through this more or less provision by provision. So you can see here, uh, number one, existing law prescribes requirements for disposal of surplus land. And it says this bill would expand the definition of local agency in this case. And it steps through that for each of the major sections of the bill. This was a pretty comprehensive bill. So the legislative uh, uh, Council's digest is fairly lengthy for this particular bill. And then you get to the actual language of the bill. When you are looking at this, changes uh, from existing text, and I'm gonna come back and explain what that means, are highlighted in blue and deletions are in strikeout. I'm gonna scroll through to see if we can find a section. Actually, because this is um, the final bill, we're not going to see that, I'll have to come show you in an earlier version. When the bill is first introduced, what it's going to show as introduced is where it changes the existing law. And so all of these things that are in blue here are additions, things like this here is a strikeout. Um, and that's what you see in the version of the text that is bill as introduced. Um, this is where it gets a little tricky. Subsequent versions, when you click on them, are no longer comparing the bill to existing law. They are actually showing what has changed in the bill text from the previous version. Uh, and that's really important. If what you're trying to see is how the bill in its current version compares to the current law, there's a separate function that we will come to. Um, so just be careful that when you're looking at any particular version of the text, the uh, additions and strikeout are not going to be additions and strikeout to current law. They're what has been changed in the bill from the previous version of the bill. Um, let me jump ahead to this today's law as amended. So let's go to hope this will work for a past bill. Um, the version that was in the assembly as of April 11th. And if you then say today's law as amended, um, it shows changes to current law compared to this version of the bill. 
So if you're still trying to figure out how is the bill as it's written right now going to change the law using this today's law as amended function is where you want to go. Otherwise, as I say, what you'll be seeing in, in the additions and strikeout is just changes from the previous bill. Um, let's go through uh, a couple of other things um, that you can look up. Um, I'm going to jump across the tabs a little. One of the first things you may want to see is what is the status of the bill. And as a bill moves through the legislature, you can see all the steps in this timeline here. This is a bill that was passed a couple years ago, so it's moved all the way through um, from passage to what is called chaptered. Uh, when a bill is chaptered, it's actually formally entered into uh, the appropriate section of state code. Uh, you can see the bill's status. It will list basic information, the measure, the lead authors, um, the topic, the title, um, and most importantly, the location um, of the bill. So it will tell you what house it's in, what committee it's in, uh, and so on. Um, and then there's a little bit of action down at the bottom about what kind of bill it is and uh, what the most recent historical actions are. So this is a quick way to check and see where is this bill in the legislative process right now uh, and what's going on with it. Related to that is bill history. So when you click on the history tab, there is literally a list of every single action that has happened on the bill. Um, a bill gets introduced, uh, no action can happen on it for a while, it gets read into the legislature, it will get referred to the committee, if you look where I'm pointing down towards the bottom here, um, and then it just moves through various processes, uh, first through different committees in the House of Origin, gets passed on the floor, uh, and once it is passed out of its original house, it moves to the other house. So you can see here that mid-year it moved to the Senate and goes through a similar process where it's read for the first time. And here it says to the Committee on Rules for assignment. Um, it then went to that committee, was assigned to some specific committees, goes through those various committees and so on. So you can see uh, really what the whole detailed history on that bill was. Another thing you may want to see is who voted for or against the bill. Um, and that's in the bill votes section uh, right here. And it has votes. Um, again, this will be in reverse date order. So the most recent action will be at the top, uh, working down to the earliest actions at the bottom. And in each case, it will tell you the date of the vote, uh, location will tell you where that vote took place and whether it passed or failed, uh, what the vote count was and identifying who voted uh, yay and nay on the bill. Um, so if you're interested to see, for example, what happened to a bill in a particular committee, right here we're looking at what happened to the Surplus Land Act Amendments AB 1486 in the Senate Housing Committee. Uh, and you can see here um, that the bill passed. Uh, the motion was to pass, but first re-refer it to the Committee on Governmental Organization. That's because the bill had been referred to multiple committees. And then an identification of who voted in favor and who voted against. And that happens, uh, as I said, for each committee, as well as the floor vote in both the Assembly and the Senate. Um, of particular importance uh, as you're moving through these is to look at bill analysis. So as bills move through the different committees, there are legislative analysts who will do a written analysis of the bill. And it's often quite useful to go through this and see uh, that analysis, which summarizes the important provisions of the bill. Um, and sometimes we'll discuss pros and cons um, so, for example, let's look at the Assembly Housing and Community Development analysis here, and you can see there's a whole document with an analysis of the bill, uh, the um, committee that it's in, uh, the bill number and author, and which version they are actually looking at. So this is the bill as amended on April 11th of 2019. There is a summary of what the bill does, fairly lengthy in this case. 
and usually um, some discussion that says, here's what's in existing law, uh, are there any fiscal impacts, and then comments from the legislative uh, analysts, which sometimes will actually recommend that the committee um, consider uh, some specific action. This is where the legislative analyst may flag particular issues um, for further attention. Um, and hey, Jeff, most, yes, we can't um, we can't see the document that you're looking at. Oh, right? I'm so sorry. Let me switch to that uh, document. Give me thank you a moment. Stop sharing and reshare. And that should be on the bill analysis now. Um, let me scroll to the top. Is that what everybody is seeing? No, we're still seeing, the, still seeing the web browser. Oh, for goodness sake, hang on. There we go. Let's try that one. Looks good. That worked good. Okay, so this is a bill analysis. Um, again, at the top, Assembly Committee on Housing and Community Development, uh, the bill number, the version of the bill that this analysis is about. Um, and then, as I said, a summary of the bill, uh, walking through it provision by provision, uh, flagging issues, um, a summary of existing law, if there's a fiscal impact that may be mentioned and then comments from the legislative uh, analyst, what's the purpose of this bill uh, and changes that are being made. As I said, um, sometimes there will be things in here that are recommendations for things that the committee might want to consider. Uh, there's also a note here, for example, that there was a governor's executive order dealing with uh, state-owned public land. So there's just a reference that something is going on there just so that legislators and the public looking at this um, have some idea. This is a particularly detailed analysis. Sometimes the analyses are much briefer. Um, it is, I think, particularly useful to go through all of the analyses that are listed. Sometimes an earlier analysis will cover more detail than a later one. Uh, it, it kind of varies from committee to committee. Uh, towards the end of that, um, there may be notes about related legislation that is moving through the legislature at the same time, some history on previous legislation, a couple of other bills uh, related to Surplus Land Act. And at the bottom, uh, often you will find registered support and opposition. We're going to be talking a little later about how you actually register your support or opposition. Um, but here you can see which organizations are supporting and which organizations are opposing the bill, um, including a position of oppose unless amended. Um, that's not always, that detail is not always provided there. Sometimes it's just support and oppose. But uh, this is a good way to find out um, who's lining up where on a particular piece of legislation. Okay, let me switch back to the other site. Um, oops, there we go. Stop sharing and reshare. Okay, uh, we should be back to the main site. Do we have that visible, Alex? Yes. Okay, so this was the bill analysis section. As I said, you can see each version of analysis as you go through it. Um, so that's basically how you view bill information. The other thing that this site will let you do is track a bill. And there, there are sort of two ways you can do this. You can bookmark a bill um, so that it's in your favorites. Uh, so when you're looking at a bill up at the top here, um, there's a link for add to my favorites. And if you click on that, 
it will take you to your favorites, but you must be registered with the site first. Um, so I will just um, make sure that I am logged on here so you can see what this looks like. And once you log in, you should be able to go to my favorites. And these bookmarks persist. Um, and it's a central uh, bookmark place for the legislator site. So you can see there's a section for bookmarked bills by session. Uh, so you can see in here, for example, that AB 1486 was bookmarked. So I could jump back to it pretty quickly that way. Um, if there are sections of uh, state law that you want to bookmark that when you're looking through the California law section, they actually show up in this same place in my favorites. Um, so let's go back to 1486 again. So the one thing you can do is, um, as I said, click on this and, and make it um, a favorite. Uh, the other thing you can do is track a piece of legislation. Jeff, so, I think you're going to need to go to a, a, a law that you are not already tracking in your account. Sure, let's, uh, let's do AB 15 from this year. And we will add that one. So we jump on that. We can now add to my favorites. We click there. You choose which folder you want to put it in, um, or you can create a new folder. So if you want to keep this separate by um, session or year, um, this is 2021. I want to have a folder for bills this year. You do that. You can see I've now added a new folder for this session. You open that up, and there is uh, within that session, this folder that I just created, and then the bill, AB15. Um, so now I've got a quick way of getting to it just by logging onto the site and going into my favorites. That's particularly useful when you can't remember the numbers of all the bills that you were trying to follow. Um, you would have them bookmarked here. Um, so that's great just for bookmarking bills, but uh, the other uh, thing you may want to do is actually track the bill as it moves through the legislature. And you can do that. This is essentially called subscribing to the bill. So again, in the bill, there's a link for track bill. And if you click on that, you get a screen that looks like this. And what it is asking you to do is indicate which actions by the legislature you want to be notified about. Um, you can select them all with one click like that, or you can choose only particular actions. So across the desk, I will tell you, is not a particularly useful function unless you're really delving into the details because this is basically um, when things are just being moved between committees. I think what you want to know is when a bill is referred to committee, when it has been amended, uh, you can see floor results. Enrolled in governor's response is when a bill is uh, passed by the legislature and forwarded to the governor. Uh, and then once that's happened, any uh, responses from the governor. Um, the final results, uh, if you're trying to figure out when a bill is going to be set for hearing, you can click here and you will then be notified so once you choose whichever actions you care about the most, you click on add notifications. And uh, from then on, you will get an email uh, notifying you that these actions have happened. So, and the email will go to whatever email address you registered on the site. Uh, it's all linked together. Um, so this is really handy as a way of being notified when something of significance happens on a bill that you are following. And uh, we use this often when we're following particular pieces of legislation. Um, so that uh, basically covers um, how you find bills how, and how you track them.